and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please join me in a moment of silence. Due to a couple closed sessions, the first item tonight is item number three, which is citizen concerns. Uh, the number to call in if you're watching online is 712-224-6014. How many are watching online right now, Andy? One million or two or... Two watching right now. Two so to the two people that just heard that, that's the number. Is there anyone here to speak on an item not already addressed on the agenda? Seeing none, item four is approval of the agenda. I'll move it. Second. Second, Second by DeWitt. Hearing no discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Passes 5-0. Items five through nine constitute a consent agenda of routine action items to be considered by one motion. Items pass unanimously unless a separate vote is requested by a board member. Item five is approval of the minutes of the July 21st meeting. Item six is approval of the claims. Item seven is to receive the fiscal year ending June 30th sheriff's reports. Item eight from the county auditor includes A, receive the auditor's quarterly report. B, approve the cigarette permit for HCI Heritage Express Company in Sloan, Iowa. And C, approve the liquor license for Scarecrow Farm in Lawton, Iowa. And item nine from Human Resources is approval of the Memorandum of Personnel of Transactions. Any questions on the consent agenda? I'll move it. I'll second the motion by Radig. Hearing no discussion, all in favor say aye. 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 Those say nay. Passes 5-0. Item 10 from Williams and Company, uh, welcoming Mr. Chad Regner to discuss and receive the Woodbury County Certified Annual Financial Report for FY19. Good afternoon. I, <clears throat> Chad Rainier with Williams Company. Well, this is after the project that you guys took with changing of the, the software. It was uh, quite the audit this year, but uh, we ended up getting through it. There was a lot more that went into it this year because of the, the change in software. Um, even though that we had the, the um, you know, kind of learning curve with it, it, in my opinion, is definitely the right move to do that I think in the long term that you guys will be very happy with it and it'll be a lot more like accountable to the citizens of Woodbury County too, having everything in one one software. So like I said that it was, it was a lot of work, but it was the right decision long term. So I uh, figured I would just kind of go through the report here that um, the first couple of pages here, the page starting on page three, uh, that's the letter of transmittal that basically it's management uh, just describing the different things that are going on within the county, you know, economically and, and everything like that. Um, so it's management's own words that, um, that they put this together. Uh, page nine is the uh, uh, GFOA, the Government Finance Officers Association Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting. And so, uh, Woodbury County received this award for the FY18 audit, and we did submit to uh, apply for the same award for FY19. Uh, typically, this would have to be submitted to them by uh, December 31st, but because of the change in software and because of the COVID-19 pandemic, that we were able to, to extend it out, and so um, they kept accepting the extensions, and so and then I could see that they, they accepted the submission of it, so it was submitted uh, timely, and, and so they'll, they'll uh, review the report, and I don't see why, why you wouldn't get this. I, I fully expect that you would get this uh, award for the FY19 report as well. Um, I did see that I think that uh, FY18 was the 17th consecutive year that the county has received this award, so 
it's a uh, you know a lot of work goes into it. There's a lot of uh, statistical tables that the typical report doesn't doesn't include that is included in this report. So so it's a good prestigious award to, to receive. And starting on page 14 is our um, auditor's opinion. Uh, pretty self-explanatory here. That's that um, we we audit in accordance with government auditing standards. That you guys did have a, a single audit, so that'd be an audit of the federal awards too. And there's uh, an equation to that on how many grants we have to have to look at. Uh, this year, it's noted in the back, but we did only look at one one grant uh, that was required because I think. The total expenditures were down just a little bit, so then that meant that we didn't have to look at, at as many. But uh, that the single audit that is the uh, uh, most strict type of audit that there's a lot of a lot of work that goes into that as well, and making sure that the, the grants are in compliance with um, what the government you know, sent the money for. <coughs> Page 17 is uh, management discussion analysis. Uh, again, this, there's a lot of comparative information between 19 and 18 in here that, um, you know, this is probably 130 some pages or so that if you don't have time to, to look at it all, uh, this is one of the pages that, uh, one of the sections that I would look at because it, it has a lot of good information, quick information that gives you a good idea of what's going on. Uh, start on page 25. This is what we call a uh, statement of net position. It's the government-wide financial statement, so it has all the fixed assets and all the debt and everything that the fund level statements don't include. Um, you really can't make management decisions from this this statement, but if you want a good overall picture um, and compare the you know compare Woodbury County to a uh, another county that um, this would be a good one to kind of kind of look at to, for comparative purposes. Uh, 26 and 27 is just the income statement of that government wide, so kind of the same thing. Uh, page 28 and 29, uh, that this is a start of the fund level financial statements that every fund is in this report somewhere that. Um, up in the front part here is just the major funds, and then all the non-major funds are summarized in the other governmental fund column. But those funds are shown individually later on. Uh, that we only had uh, general fund and secondary roads as the major funds, so that means that those were large enough to, to be shown in the front. Then um, page 31 is the income statement of those funds as well. Uh, one thing that we always like to point out is the um, number of days of unassigned fund balance. So basically what that means is that, um, you know, if the county did not receive any more revenue at, after FY19, after June 30, 19, how many days could you operate without uh, receiving any more revenue? And this year it calculated out to be approximately 57 days. Last year it was 59 days, and so you guys are, are right there. Uh, typically, we kind of like to see like 90 days, so you might be a little bit short, but there's nothing nothing for concern there. Then starting on page 38 is the notes to the financial statements, and there's just a lot of detail in here that if you want more detail, uh, that from the, the finan or for the financial statements that you could go to to the notes. Um, like I said it's a lot of a lot of details, so I'm just not going to spend a lot of time there. Uh, page 59 is the budget to actual uh, comparison, so um, you can kind of look at how you guys did compared to to how it was budgeted. Then starting on page 65. Uh, this is where all the non-major funds are at. So these are all the smaller funds that were summarized in that one column earlier in the report. Uh, one thing to note is on page 77 that these are all the agency funds. 
that um, so you know like property taxes that you, the county collects for other other entities and all that that there was supposed to be a new standard that um, was going to be coming into play in FY20 because of COVID-19 and got kicked down the road a year. Uh, but then I know that we got to we'll be doing some evaluation on all these agency funds for because they, they changed the definition of that. So um, I think that's like GASB 80 something that within the last 10, 15 years, I think they've added, you know, I don't even know how many that probably 60 different GASBs and prior to that there was only like 30 some GASBs so they've they've really been increasing the standards and the requirements that I know since I've been been working I bet you the report has has probably increased 20 to 25 pages just because of additional standards that are required now so the great GASB the great GASB voice and English teacher she liked that one uh, then the next section that I want to point out is uh, starting on page 94. So this is the, uh, the statistical section that I mentioned that uh, is included with the, the CAFR, the GFOA certificate program, that there's 10 years worth of in information so you can uh, you know, uh, see different trends and everything. Um, one thing, that, let me find the page. So on page 112 and 113, this is the uh, legal debt margin that for 19 that you guys only were using 1.8% of the debt. And so I know that um, with the, the jail coming up and everything that you guys definitely have uh, sufficient room to be uh, issuing any kind of debt in the future. So. So that's that's very low, actually. You said 1.8. One, one it'd be like 1.84 mm -hmm. percent uh, is what you're actually only using. So, so you got 98 percent room to go. What do you think that'll peak at with the project? I don't think we'll even get to 30, will we? Pro probably not, because how much was that? Did you just, Dennis, you say 50? 50 million and then 10 million 60, so you'll be at about 20 percent. Yeah. Less than that. Yeah, probably less than that. Yeah, so. So like I said, you guys are sitting sitting pretty good there. Uh, then getting towards the end here, but on page uh, 120 is the schedule of expenditures, federal awards. Uh, for you guys that we do combine Siouxland District Health grants because they're a component unit of the county. So, so this schedule is showing both uh, the county and Siouxland District Health together. And so you had uh, spent because it's not the amount that received, but you, you spent uh, roughly 1.8 million in, in federal awards. And then 122 and 123 and four is just different um, audit reports that we also have to include that we don't put an opinion on that your internal controls because we don't test internal controls, but we are required to gain an understanding of them. And that's what this, uh, First, first one says, and then um, on page 124, uh, we actually do test internal controls over the, the grant that we had to test. And so then that's basically what that one is, is saying. Um, and then you just have the, the schedule of um, findings and then, and then um, prior year findings and then uh, corrective action plans. So. That's, that's about it. <coughs> about it. Is there any, any questions? Doesn't look like it. They said it was it was a you know a, a long audit, but but now I guess we we'll get get ready for FY20, and I know that we're sitting in a lot better position uh, FY20 with the software than than what we were a year ago. It should make future audits easier. It should, yep, yep, mm -hmm. for sure. Good. Thank you for reassuring us. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that I don't know, you know how many of you was all on board. Hopefully you all were on board. But, um, yeah, like I said, it was definitely the right, the right decision. To so do. I want to thank the board for being very supportive of uh, moving forward with uh, converting this. Thank you. Yeah, I want to give a shout out to Michelle because she, she was... Uh, very helpful in all of this as well. So. Yes, thank you. Both. All right. Thank you.
Thanks. Thank you. I'll move to receive. Second. Second by Radig. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Those say nay. Passes 5 0. <clears throat> Item 11 from the County Auditor's Office is to approve and receive for signature the amendment to remove Tyler Technologies employee self-service time and attendance. Michelle Scaff, Deputy Auditor. Um, we talked about this briefly before COVID hit and uh, we did do a change order to remove employee self-service time and attendance. This was a feature that we thought we would use for secondary roads for um, timekeeping and the um, once we started looking at it, it really wasn't efficient for us. So we do not need this. This will uh, eliminate $735 in the annual cost, and they will be refunding us 551 which was already paid. Recommend to approve and receive her signature. So I'll move moved. It. Second. Second by Radig. Any discussion on <coughs> getting money back? All right, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. Passes 5 0. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next is item 12 from emergency services. Includes A for action approval to begin the process to purchase new turnout gear. Good afternoon. Gary Brown, Woodbury County Emergency Services Director. Um, during the budgeting process, during the improvement hearings, uh, we had submitted the, these two requests uh, for the turnout gear and the replacement of a truck. Uh, the board received them, and we'd like to get started on the process of purchasing. We, were in, we understood that we had to come back to the board to get approval to move forward with purchasing. The turnout gear was supposed to be around, what was it again? Pardon? How much was the price on the turnout gear? Well, we budgeted 25000 25000 and... Do you have something you found? And yes, okay. uh, we've been communicating with Michelle and the insurance or Melissa and the insurance company, and rather than a full firefighting bunker gear, we're going to go with an urban search and rescue quality gear, which uh, equals the level of protection they need for the job they do. Okay. Be a little less to maintain, uh, a little more user friendly. Is this required by the state that we have this equipment? It's required by the insurance company. Are we required to have it by the state for what you do down there? We're re this, no, not by the state, but by the insurance company. Okay. What's the reasoning? For well, I mean, I don't, I mean, Gary told us here a few months ago when he wanted that air compressor truck that we don't have a legitimate legal fire department. And now I'm wondering why we're buying stuff that's not required by the state. It's personal protective gear for the employees for the job that they're doing. You have to equal the personal protective equipment to the task that the employee is <coughs> doing. We've been through this with, uh, I can't remember the initials of the insurance company, but um, they came in and evaluated what we were currently using and their recommendation. They, they gave several recommendations and we followed all of them, and this is the last one, and they agreed to allow us to set this off because there was no money in the budget. We were in the middle of the year to let us run it through the budgeting process. I'll move A. I'll second. Motion by Potabom, second by Radig. Is there any more detail that can be provided? Um, we're going to bring back quotes so you can see exactly what's being purchased. It, it's pants, boots, jacket, headgear, gloves uh, that equal the one outfit. I guess I'm just wondering the reasoning for getting approval at this step uh, when there's not really a quote. What I was understanding when we did the improvement requests is that you received them, but before we could move forward with the purchasing process, we had to come back and get approval to move forward with the purchasing process. Okay, but you'll come back know. again with the quotes. I do believe he, just he was told that. So. Yeah. What's that? I do believe he was told that. Okay. I think all of us that put in improvement requests were told that. I think the only one that the day that I was here was the exception was uh, Rebecca Socknot, the money they needed to do the work on the Security Institute building. I think you approved it that day. Okay. 
Any other discussion? There's no room in the, in the existing budget. Oh, no, this is budgeted for. Pardon? We did budget for this, did we? Yes. Mm -hmm. It's in, it's, it's a line item already in my existing budget. It just, it had to get a second level of approval and a third level is what I bring back to quotes. It's, yeah. Huh. It, it's actually paid off CIP. Yeah. Yeah. It's not actually in his budget. It's paid off CIP. It'll be part of our bond issue and, um, or our loan in May of 21. Yeah. It was an improvement request. Yeah. Any other discussion? Uh, I was going to say, so do you expect it to come in under the 25000 then? Because we hope so. Okay. Yeah. With modifying it to the urban search and rescue gear, we hope to bring it in under. One of the reasons we went back and re-looked at this is because prices have gone up, and when I got an initial quote for the firefighting gear, it was over the twenty five, and that's when I started communicating with Scott at the insurance company because we really don't need that level of. Well, what I hear is that there's quite a demand on this kind of equipment right now, and a very low supply, so uh, I am kind of afraid of where this might come in. Well, that's why we're trying to get started in July. Yeah. We, we told the insurance company we would get this done in the, in the next budgeting cycle with board approval, with the board approved. Can you describe the, the gear in a little more detail? It's a, it's a Nomex pant jacket. It's not fireproof, it's fire retardant, so it keeps like if they're working a rescue or something, they get up against a sharp object or glass. It doesn't cut into the employees. It's a layer of protection over their regular clothing in their in their uh, bodies. It, um, and it it provides some protection from cold weather in the winter. So because these guys are out in all kinds of day and night weather, the other thing that would be nice is with that urban search and rescue kind of gear, it's not as bulky. It'll give them more ability to move in it. Fire gear is really bulky. I could have, I should have probably brought a picture of it. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. 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 Passes three to two. Right and DeWitt opposed. Next item is B. This is approval to begin the process to purchase a new rescue truck. It's, um, again, this was put in as an improvement request. We've gone from utility body trucks to just a uh, off the lot, one ton dually pickup, basically. And um, the one that we're, we're going to take the one that we're replacing and put it into a lesser service category and then get rid of the oldest vehicle in the fleet. That's what we've always kind of done as we we take the one that we've got and put it back into use again. But the one that we've got, by the time we get through this, will probably be at 150, 160 for uh, mileage, 150, 160,000. And, uh, you know, it's a frontline piece of equipment that's used every day to respond to emergency calls. It's, we've got kind of a long range CIP set out to where we, we think we're timing it with the CIP to where we can replace trucks periodically rather than come in and say we need four trucks all at once. So we're buying one every so often. And again, this was this is was received and it's it's figured into the the uh, improvement request budget. Same dollar amount, fifty three thousand? Yes. And that'll include the vehicle and the changing over the equipment that's on it. Getting it lettered and and again we hope to bring that in less than fifty three thousand but that's kind of the number that, based on the estimates that we've gotten. Um, yeah, but what kind of make, I'll second that, what, what kind of make and everything were you looking at? We will take the best price. So we've got a Freightliner, we've got a Ford, we've got a Dodge, we've got a Chevy. So, I mean, our fleet, there's no, we don't go to one dealer. We, we do like to buy within Woodbury County, if possible. And this would be repurposed, the uh, Unit 206? Yeah, the old truck will be repurposed for grass rick. For what? To do grass fires. This is the one truck that we've got is a 70, what is that? I think it's uh, 1992 maybe. How often is that used? 
uh, several times a year for grass fires, house fires, whatever fires. We, we go to all the structure fires with the big truck, but right around us, um, we would take it to a structure fire. We've kept, we probably have three or four houses that would have probably burnt down if we hadn't have gotten there and put water on the, I mean, we just do it from the outside. We had one east of town that when we got there, the siding was on fire and we put it out because we're closer than anybody else. We're 10 miles closer than anybody else in that part of the county. So the current one would be disposed of, sold? No, that one's the, the, the one that we're going to take it offline is going to go into the grass fire usage and then the, that truck will be sold. Yeah, that's what that's my question. Yeah. You're just going to stair step them down. Yeah, but there's no reason to take a truck that's <clears throat> fairly a lot newer than the one that's sitting there. Some part you can't get parts for. So. Anything else, Gary? Pardon? Anything else? No. On the motion by Potavon, second by Radig. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. Nay. Passes four to one. DeWitt opposed. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be back with the uh, price. <coughs> Gary, could you please hand this to back to Michelle? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Item 13 from the Board of Supervisors. Supervisor DeWitt for action is approval to allocate funds for inventory of certain assets per county policy. Go ahead. Uh, we have not, well, I've stared over. We've had a county policy in place since at least 1997, a policy change in 98, and another policy revision in February of 2013, and nobody can seem to pinpoint the last time we've had one of these audits that by, by our own county policy should be annual, um, and it's also required report to comply with governmental accounting auditing and financial reporting or I'm going to say gaffer for the uh, acronym but uh, and I'm not even imposing that we have a, a an entire audit of the entire county I mean I don't I'm not worried about dust and chairs or the land at this moment but I kind of like to start with you know what we have for for motor graders dump trucks secondary roads uh, assessor's office, uh, conservation, just anything that might be on the road, push, pulled, towed, carried, whatever. I think that's a good place to start. And I'm, I'm uh, recommending that we have outside uh, entity do it. Um, that's been recommended by to me by a couple of different people in the know on how these things work. So I'm proposing that the state auditor do this and they tell us that they will charge actual, as in travel time, uh, mileage, time here, those kind of things. Questions or? For the benefit of the board, does anyone remember the last time this was followed every two years since 1997? Not been 24 years I've been here. Well, we. I, I will. Am I on? I just say is that uh, I mean it was proposed. I don't remember when it first, was first brought, Dennis. Do you? Or, because it, they, it was put the auditor's office uh, was supposed to do it, and uh, so each year I would come to the budget process and ask for money to do it and and be denied. Well. And okay, are you done? Yep. Okay, and then another thing that happened was, I think Kenny came to the board or board office. I don't remember the situation, but I think you came to the. You wanted to. There was a couple of cars out there at Prairie Hill that you wanted to move or disposed of or something, and you asked the question of, how do we do that? Where's the title for them? Those kind of things, and and it just kind of expanded from there. I'm just looking for. I mean, it's always been in the back of my mind, but. I just think it's time we start uh, going by our own county policy, and and if nothing else, it might clean up the books, make future audits easier, better, cleaner, faster. I don't know, but I think it's our own policy. We should abide by it. 
at least in part for the first year, not jump in both feet and... Um, there has not been an audit since at least 2013, you wrote. Um, do, uh, do we know for a fact what the scope of that audit was? I, I, well, like Pat says, he can't remember one in his 24 years because he'd ask for the money and wouldn't get it. I'm just going by the 2013 as the last time the, the policy was revised. Okay. Yeah. I don't think they did one in 2013. They just revised the policy. Yeah. Right. Well, that's good. So our long-lasting policy that's never been <laughs> fo followed got revised again. Because um, I was tired of asking for the money and getting denied. So what was the revision? Do you Pardon? remember? Do you remember what the revision was? The revision was that the board would be responsible for it. I ah. said, I'm not going to have it there that says the auditor shall do this uh. and get the money denied and continue to come and ask for it and get it denied. It wasn't going to be my responsibility anymore. You don't handle yeah, rejection like well, Pat? I like do this part. Uh, okay. <laughs> no, I'm not saying the auditor is supposed to do that. And he's not, that means he's he not doing it. Too, what we were told. I looked through all the uh, policy review committee minutes from the last few years, and I couldn't find this one being uh, discussed. Do you remember it coming up? I don't think so. Uh, uh, Joshua, if you uh, do you remember this coming up? as a possible discussion topic in those committee meetings, either through yourself or... I don't recall that. Yourself. I would have been around in 2013, but I don't remember it okay. coming through that or across my desk. Okay. So they revised who is responsible, but didn't revise actually doing it. <laughs> it was approved in 97, changed in 98, and revised in 13 but never followed. Well, it needs to be done in some form or fashion mm -hmm. because we have a policy on it and it's a, I don't know what this, what best practice is, but I would think that it would be lenient to go every seven to 10 years, which, and we're far beyond. Dennis that. tried it one time. <laughs> what did you try, Dennis? Uh, I went out to the trails. Oh, you went out there, okay. <laughs> and they kicked you out? Uh, you're embarrassing us in front of our two viewers. <laughs> you described it to me as a drug bust. <laughs> Is your mic still on? Okay. <laughs> and for it wasn't under this administration, I don't believe, Dave. <laughs> okay. Well, I agree. If we're going to have a policy, we ought to at least get the first one done. Mm -hmm. And then we can look from there and see how often we think it needs to be. Well, another one, well, it's on here in the backup material, too. There's also the categories of land, mm -hmm. any land retained for county use. I would say, I mean, we kind of know where the buildings are, most of them. Um, and improvements other than buildings, machinery and equipment, and construction in progress. Uh, I guess my, my, my thought process is go after things that might have a, a plate on it or Travel on the road, how about, with, like I said, with secondary roads, conservation, sheriff's office, uh, just just kind of get us in place, get us moving in the right direction, get us under our own policy. And So it is in your, can I ask a question? Sure. Is it uh, your intent to uh, put together some sort of proposal? I'm sure? working on it as we speak. Okay. Oh, you mean as far as the exact equipment? No, the, uh, just what the criteria is for your proposal. I mean, you said you're going to do the state auditor, uh, that's, and you're not going to do everything, so you must have something in mind in one of those categories. Or? Yeah, that's why I said anything that is, like, for example, uh, machinery and other equipment. So conservation, yeah. their vehicles, I'm not looking at lawnmowers, I'm not looking at chainsaws, I'm just looking at, for now, the moment is I want equipment that is on the road, yeah. or, or motor graders, dump trucks. Uh, even some of the things on the listing were itemized separate, separately as snow plows. Well, I don't anticipate a, a nine foot wide snow plow being missing from county inventory, but, and nor does it have a serial number or license plate on it that I'm, that I'm aware of. But I, I, let's start with something that, that we can go to the auditor's office and find a list of equipment and run from there. Sounds good. Thank you. <laughs> so, but before we contract with the state auditor you're going to have a list of specifically what yes i'm working on. on that as we speak and i'm okay. actually done what i actually just need to do now is condense it and put it on an attachment and send it to the guy and or the or the office down there and 
you asked it better than I did, Marty. Thanks for being so clear, Mr. Potterbaum. <laughs> and I assume the state office has done this for some other counties before? Yes. Good. So. At what anticipated cost? Uh, he won't. He cannot give us an, a full cost because he does not know how long they will be here. That's why he's looking for a, a reasonably itemized list. Um, I said, should I go up to 10000 or up to 15000 And he said he was a little bit noncommittal, but he thought 15000 would be high by a fair amount. So, like I said, it, it, we're a little bit different because we're the distant. I mean, we're almost as far as you can get from Des Moines as there is. But um, he, like you said, he's, he's travel cost, uh, actual time, but it will be actual cost billed to the county. So I guess I'm open to how you would want to word that for proposal on funding it. Um, Dennis, do you have a recommendation on source? Two sources. One is gaming revenue. We have 141,000 available, assuming the casino stays open. Or we go to cash reserves and pay out a board expense under professional services or audit. That's probably, I mean, that, I can't so imagine. Also, I save gaming. Using some of our reserves, I can't imagine being $50,000 doing it for five, ten. Yeah, I'd see it as being like a $5,000 kind of deal. So I, I think you'd probably pull it out of, you know, the board expenses. And we have been in the budget. What are you doing today? We don't have much for travel expenses or anything this year, so. <laughs> no kidding. No conferences. Um. <laughs> And Pat, how does Rocky's proposal compare to what you were wanting to do in prior years? Oh, yeah, similar to that, just to get started. But uh, in, in terms of follow the policy. In terms of, <laughs> but in, in terms of things to count. Well, you would start with something simple. We have a list of uh, we uh, keep the titles to vehicles and that sort of thing. I don't know exactly what uh, secondary roads. Uh, they went back and forth. Do we have any of that, or do secondary roads still keep that? Okay, but that's but it's a good. This is Human Resources Director. I just want to also add that we also receive a list of all our equipment every year for a renewal for our um, property insurance. So that so might be a direction. It would be a good exercise to do. Yeah. So if there, if the state discovers discrepancies, not necessarily because of just anything intentional, but records were not kept, would we just update our records? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, there's there doesn't seem to be any no. any penalty for okay having we're doing them. what you're supposed to do. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, I anticipate this these officers, if that's what they're called, coming in agents um, would be interfacing with Kenny quite a bit. No, I think that the, the, the way I understand it, they'd probably be uh, talking to Mark or Ben at, at, at uh, Secondary Roads. They'd probably spend most of their time in the auditor's office just looking <laughs> uh, looking through the records that we have. I, I'm sure, like like she said, the titles and, and whatnot. So I, okay. I think it's, I don't know that they're going to be a lot of time in the field. I think they're just going to be, the way he explained it to me was, we're just going to be comparing, you know, like I said, we've got listings of all the deputy cars, for example, and cross-check that. Yeah, Bowerly's got Charger, Garth Wright's got the Ram, and that got kind of thing. I don't know that they actually need to go put their hands on everything. They're just making sure that our our records fit. So, so Gary's truck from 1992 will be in there. Actually, there's a 1990-something Astro van still on the one list. Sweet. Yeah, from the sheriff's office. Wow. But I don't know where that would, I don't know where that would be. But some of it actually on the list that I got, it says it's disposed. Obviously, I'm not worried about that, but. <laughs> What's the bike be? But if, you know, if it, if, it, if it cleans up and makes some of the things cleaner to, uh, for insurance purposes, whatever, then maybe in the long run it'll save us a little bit of money to do what we're supposed to do. You must have just asked nicer. I, you know what? I, I, it's a gift. <laughs> well, I'm comfortable with up to 15000 from, what was the line item, Dennis? Um, audit. Audit. Um, 
I mean, think of how much we've saved. You multiply that by 11 at this point, we would have been doing. It's, it's really something we need to do. And Rocky, when you're interfacing with the state, you know, maybe you could pass on this, pol this old policy and ask if they have any templates that we could use and take back to our policy I, committee. And, I can do that. And um, bring up the, you know, the threshold dollar amounts probably are different now than they were in 2013. Um, it's just something in the future. You invite the guy back every five years. Maybe yeah. we'll put it back in Pat's lap and ask him to ask for the money and we'll be more amenable. Right. Well, it's especially after so many years, it's, <laughs> it's especially after so many years, it's definitely best practice to have a third party come in and help us uh, correct all of our old. Did you get data. a new car today, Dave? That <laughs> thing. I saw they pulled up with the trailer there today, and they just dropped one off right in front of the law enforcement center. Dodge, one of those big SUVs. I thought it was like yeah, order that, cars. I think the first time we go to independent <laughs> audits, <laughs> <laughs> Carvana. <laughs> yeah, that's what it was. They just dropped it. They just pull up and dropped it off right in the street there. Oh, really? so, yeah. So. Yeah. So not buying Astro vans anymore. Huh? <laughs> and as, as far as the scope, I mean, start out with what's doable, but eventually they need to, you know, audit everything. Well, some of the things on the list, or, or one of the lists that I got, was it was down to the printers and copiers and that kind of... Well, the policy, you know, right. $5,000 lawnmowers probably aren't. There's more of them than you think. Oh, really? Yeah. Conservation has a couple. I guess. <laughs> have a lot of grass. Yeah. That's why we need to update these thresholds. So, mm -hmm. And that's something Mr. DeWitt is more than happy to do, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. In my free time. All right. I'll make a motion to approve up to 15000 in funding from the audit line item of the, uh, what was it? Board expense. Uh, second. To complete uh, inventory, second by Potabom. And we'll be using the state. It'll be, we'll be billed on actual. Uh, if there's anything beyond that cost, just come back to the board. But up to that amount, just uh, whatever they recommend, I just go through with it. I asked for the good guy discount, and he just kind of chuckled, but we'll see what happens. Yeah. All right. Any other discussion? Find out where that Astro went. <laughs> I guess yeah, it wouldn't it wouldn't uncover where anything went. It would just update update this year as we know this year is what we have. So in the future, if something disappears, we know we know when it was here. Um, Probably retired on a shooting range. Yeah. <laughs> or renovated and sold, and that's how you have that new car now. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. Passes 5-0. Thank you, Supervisor DeWitt, for bringing it up. Item 14, reports on committee meetings. Any reports? I actually have an in-person meeting coming up with workforce development. I don't know if you want to brag about that. <laughs> like my first in-person committee meeting in like <laughs> six months, it feels like, so. I have probably. <laughs> Two weeks, Keith. Yeah. <laughs> I got a bunch of paper ones in the car. <laughs> Three successive negative tests in two weeks. And, um, I'll just hold the meeting from the bathroom. <laughs> Mr. Potabom, any uh, reports? No. <laughs> right. From me, item 15, any citizen concerns? Quick one. All right. Under um, 8C, it's probably more for Pat. I don't. Do you know the liquor license for Scarecrow Farm? Is it seasonal or? I'll let Michelle. We had an issue with that because they. Uh... Go ahead, Michelle. Do you have the homework up there? I think it says I. We got it right here. It was... From Come July on. through December 31st. No. Oh.
Must That's be what he's building that new. It's got a. He's got a new structure out there. I don't know. Wine permit, outdoor service, Sunday sales. Is that the pumpkin farm? Or? Yeah. 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 He called and left me a nasty message and said that we were sitting on it, but there was some sort of uh, discrepancy that uh, apparently they thought it had to go to the city, so we never received it. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just wanted to. Okay, so here. It was added at the last minute. July 31st to noon today. No, July 1st to December 31st. It's probably going to be more seasonal than that, though, I'm guessing. Any other citizen concerns? Pumpkin spice beer or something, no. Kenny Schmitz. Kenny Schmitz, Building Services Director. Um, I'd like to invite uh, the board to a webinar that's being held on August 12th. Um, it's being conducted by Poly Jail Company. Um, Poly Jail is uh, one of the companies that does uh, detention cell installations for projects. Um, they are putting on a first ever webinar. Um, they will be hosting several different manufacturers uh, in the detention industry. Um, they will be going live to the sites of those manufacturers uh, to show you the equipment, uh, mm -hmm. new equipment that's currently out there and being manufactured. Um, Probably they'll be hosting uh, companies like Accurate Controls, which does all the uh, uh, detention, uh, law enforcement center detention security, electronics, um, electronic controls, and, and uh, uh, video and all of that kind of stuff. So that's one of the companies that will be there. Another one uh, will be Steel Cell of North America. They're actually uh, one of the companies that actu actually manufactures the steel cells, detention cells that go into the facilities. Um, so it's, it's kind of important if some of you uh, would think about attending. I'm certainly uh, inviting um, all of the members uh, from the authority uh, to come. Um, if you'd like to come, I will uh, meet with the board office and make sure that we get uh, oh, prior postings and so forth. If uh, uh, any of you want to attend, just please uh, send me an email and tell me you plan on attending. I'm waiting for a schedule from uh, Poly Jail yet. Um, it is a long webinar. It'll start in the morning and end in the afternoon. So there may be portions that some of you want to see or some that you don't want to see. Um, I would encourage uh, if you want to see portions to try to um, see the, see the, like the steel cell portions, um, because there is some newer equipment designs out there for that. Um, I will get that, uh, schedule out to you as soon as I can, so you can review that to see if it'll fit within your schedules. Thanks. August 12th, I can go. And then Kenny, while you're up here, before we go to board concern, it's board concern, but, uh, thanks for the pictures on that tree removal. What did that end up costing? I haven't got a cost on it yet. It was just completed today. Okay. So did they have an estimate of it? Or? I didn't ask for an estimate. My guess is it's probably going to be, um, I'm going to say probably in the $2,500 range. Okay. And then uh, as far as reaching out to the city, I think we should probably see what the, we need to do maybe with the sidewalk safety rail issue and then get that turned over to them. I, I don't know if they're going to want that seeded or not either with grass, but. Uh, the city did put uh, a temporary railing back up. Railing fence actually is what they, just the plastic caution fencing is what they put up. Um, and that was put back in place. <coughs> and then for anybody that doesn't know what we're talking about, there's a, a lot that's county owned and it meets up to a bunch of city-owned property that's essentially a drainage ditch. And rather than us keep maintaining a property that we're not really equipped to continue maintaining, and obviously it shows because we had huge overgrowth and trees on it, uh, and a railing had rusted off and uh, just not safe in the limits of Sioux City, I had 
uh, requested that the city of Sioux City take this property or we, we give it to them, but uh, of course they don't want to take it in the condition it was in. So uh, we're just putting it up to uh, give a weighable condition. All right, and we have removed the trees. Um, if you'd like us to put put in a permanent fence, like a chain link fence or something like that, we well, can I, do that. I was going to ask. Um, I can't believe I forgot the name. Uh, the individual at the city, what what's expected then, as far as uh, a condition that they're willing to accept it in. Okay. Yeah. If you can check on that and just convey the. Dave, Dave information to me. We'll go from there. All right. Thank you. Yep. One last, I promise. Uh, Kenny's crew, and <clears throat> thank you. Everybody's doing a great job. Prairie Hills looking amazing. I don't know if you had a chance to go out and see it. It's all paved parking lot, uh, and then up on top, <coughs> it's uh, paved up to the top, I believe, right? Yes. And uh, you Kenny's, mean up to the shooting? Yeah. Okay. And. Uh, our deputies have uh, sweat equity along with Kenny's group. Um, they have put in a retaining wall and <clears throat> fixing up a lot. And we'll, we'll have an open house in September. Going to try to do it. Since we couldn't have our law enforcement memorial, we'll try to do it in conjunction with 9-11 uh, uh, week. So uh, we'll kind of showcase it. But it, it's, it's outstanding. And Kenny's group has been uh, outstanding. Mark Nara, too, because they came out and overseeded. So uh, it, it really looks nice. Uh, really thankful that we got it paved. We drove around that last week. I was waiting for somebody to come out and ask me what I was doing out there. Yeah. <laughs> well, we, we watched you. <laughs> I drove all around it. Thank you. Any other citizen concerns? Andy, how many are still with us? We have zero callers, but nine watchers. Wow. Ooh. We're going viral. <laughs> you stay here how long? It'll be up to 100? <laughs> how it works? <laughs> don't have that long. <laughs> uh, item 16, any board concerns? Nope, nope. I'm here. Thank you. We are adjourned. <laughs>